Welcome to Two Gals in a Glass Half Full. We are two physical therapists just trying to live healthy most of the time and doing our best to see our glasses as half full. Some days that's a lot harder than others. Um, today, I'm so excited to continue our discussion on leadership. Um, but first, Dr. Jess, what do you have in your cup today? Uh, well, this morning is still early, so I'm working on my first cup of coffee. So the this is one of my favorite mugs. I've got multiple favorites, but this is one of the top contenders. It's um it's strong as a mother. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> I like it. I that was a, like that it. was a Christmas gift. Uh, so Dr. Bobby, awesome. what's in your glass? I am almost done with my uh, Starbucks coffee, iced coffee. So there you get go. the morning going. All right, and we have a special guest with us today. So we are talking about leadership this month, and there's somebody here local to Jacksonville. His name his name is Nick, and we're gonna have Nick introduce himself. But first, Nick, what's in your glass? It's it's super exciting this morning. I was running a little behind, so I didn't have time to make coffee. So it's my um, it's my my diet coke version of coffee. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Hey, one uh, of my favorite drinks. <laughs> yeah. So Nick has a, a new recovery center here in Jacksonville, and there's a lot of really great positive stuff that's coming out of this recovery center. So Nick, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, I grew up here in Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville native. I, I left uh, in 99, actually, um, for college, uh, went to West Point, spent my, my 20s in the army, um, you know, chasing bad guys around worse places. And um, got out of the army in, in 2008 and went to business school out at Stanford. Awesome experience, um, but still didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up. So I was a strategy consultant for a little bit. And, um, and then I started my, my first business in uh, pet memorialization. Um, okay. and, and in that business, our, our, our goal was to make the, the worst day for, for a pet parent just a little bit easier. Um, and so... Um, I think we did that pretty well, um, but unfortunately, as the as the business was growing, I was um, I was struggling personally, and so um, I actually stepped down from uh, the pet law center in 2017, um, and I went and uh, I got treatment myself for anxiety, depression, substance use disorder, and um, you know, kind of through that process, that um, you know, I realized that that while wow, the, the things that I'm learning in the, the, this process um, could really help a lot of people, um, whether they're in my shoes or not. And so, um, you know, once I kind of got myself squared away, um, I started looking at an opportunity to say, how can we, how can we do this better for other people? And so um, that was kind of the, the impetus for Sophros and, um, you know, where we are today, we, we provide uh, addiction and mental health treatment um, at the PHP, IOP uh, and outpatient level. So kind of everything from, I mean, you guys know, but for, for any listeners that don't really everything ranging from, you know, full-time job where you're here 30 hours a week to, um, you know, down to, to outpatient treatment where you're here for a couple hours a week. So um, it's been a super rewarding experience. We're, we're growing the team. We just expanded next door. So it's been, it's been a pretty wild ride, but we're, we're excited about the way things are going. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And I've heard, I've only heard really good things for uh, the people that are working there. And then also some um, other individuals that have done a lot of research with other places that are available and around and just how comprehensive the program is. So that's, that's great. Like really, really well thought. Yeah. Uh, so Nick, in inside of this world of, of, you know, business development and running and running companies, um, that means that leadership is something that you're going to have to work on yourself. So as, as far as your perspective, what kind of leader do you see yourself as? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. You know, I hope that, um, you know, if I were to say, okay, what are the what are the words my team would use to describe me? Like what I hope those would be, would be, um, you know, vision driven, um, supportive, um, present, um, I like that one. Mm -hmm. you know, caring. I mean, I think those are the things that, that I think, and then, and then of course, competent, um, you know, I don't know that that's the word that, that team members would, would use or say, or the first thing they would say, but, I, but I think it's important that people believe that you're, that you know what you're doing um, because, you know, they have to trust that, that you're going to do the things that keep the business afloat and that keep your, you know, keep your team 
you know, gainfully employed and successful. Um, because if the business isn't successful, then it's hard for them to be successful individually too. So, yeah, there's that balance between um, the practicality of the business, and I mean, you got to pay bills and <laughs> make sure the payroll is is covered, and you know, everything else. There's a, there's practicality to it, but then there's also this this nuance that needs to happen because you're working with humans. And, and trying to get this team of people together to see a common goal and come together and each use their own strengths to be able to make something that's as comprehensive as Sophros. So that, that's awesome that I can see where that would take a lot of presence and um, clarity, but then also having that practical side of competence. Um, absolutely. Um, so when you're in, in the workplace, what are strategies that you use to keep the culture positive? Yeah, so I think, you know, even taking it a step back, I think that, that the two most important things when it comes to company culture, in my mind, um, the most important thing is like setting a clear vision and having that vision absolutely present in everything that you do. Um, you know, it, it, as Simon Sinek says, like people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And so, um, you know, there's a, there's a nice little talk he gives called start with why and there's a book too associated, but, but, but really, you know, the business has to be about your why. And here at Sophros, our why is to help clients regain their lives, period. That's what we do. Anything that you do to that. And, and then, then that has to be supported by your key values. And then that has to be supported by the type of people you hire. And then that has to be supported by the decisions that management makes every day. So if you set a clear vision, which most companies don't even do to start with, but if you set a clear vision and then a manager or the owner takes an action that is antithetical to that key, core, key vision that says, hey, we need our therapy appointments to be 35 minutes now because we need to be able to do this in order to increase bottom line. It's over. The business is over. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You know, the second you make a decision that's against your core values or you tell someone that they can't do something or you you admonish someone for doing something that's in line with your core values or your vision, it's over. And so it really has to be this consistent theme of what do we do? We help clients regain their lives. How do we do that? We do it through quality care. We do it through we do it through celebration. We do it through personal and professional growth. We do it through. And so, so you have these, this vision and these values, and then every action that you take from there on in must be consistent with that vision in order for the business itself to have integrity. Right. And, and I think that's what people resonate about. So that's the first thing is like alignment with the vision and then consistency on it. And then I think the second thing that people, um, in order to preserve, to build and preserve a company vision is in your team. So team selection is wildly important. Um, you know, it's almost like a nature versus nurture thing, right? Where, you know, you, you know, we talk a lot about leadership on how you nurture someone to become this, this version and then all the people become great. And, but so much of it is selection too, right? It's the, like the genetics of the business, so to speak. It's like, who did you choose to start with? Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't necessarily mean like, are they the best? Are they an A player? But are they firmly aligned with your vision? Are, were they aligned with your vision before they came to the company, right? Because you could join a company and you could say, oh, well, you know, I am going to join this company and I'm going to make it my life's mission, like with the Pet Loss Center, to say, I'm going to make the worst day for a pet owner a little bit better. But I don't own a dog. I've never had an animal in my life. But I'm <laughs> going to do that thing because that's the vision of the company. I'm going to, I'm going to own it. Well, that's okay. It might work for an average company. But you want that that to be that person's mission before they even got here, or at least, or at least something around that. And so, so selecting people whose vision aligns with your company vision, and then you can tweak it, right? And then you can kind of laser it in to say, okay, well, you know, your vision was to, you know, help help your clients' marriages be more healthy, and now you're going to change that to helping our clients, you know, recover from from substance use disorder. That's okay, right? That's a change. But it's not it's not a wholesale change in in how they think about the world. And so so getting and selecting those right people and then conversely, unfortunately, if there is a culture mismatch with an individual in the company, that person can no longer work at the company. I can I go ahead. 
I was gonna say, I, I love how your vision is so simple too. It's like simple that anyone in your company, whether they're front desk answering the phone or to owner management can kind of follow it. Um, and I think that makes it applicable to like everyone. Um, it makes that easy. And then I was gonna say, I used to coach gymnastics and I used to always say like, I can teach you the actual skills of how to coach and spot, but I can't teach you to be energetic with kids. I like you can, but it's, it's hard. Like you got to come in energetic. You got to come in excited. You got to come in wanting to learn and putting a little bit like forth, not just being spoon fed, but I can teach you the skills, but that other stuff, like you got to come with, and it makes a huge difference. Um, kind of in your yep. outcomes. hundred percent. Totally agree with you. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I've noticed within the physical therapy world is we've got individuals that are in the company and it could be anywhere from front desk, billing, intake, therapist, tech, office manager, all of these different roles that are within the company. And when we don't have, it, like you said, one person, it just takes mm -hmm. one person inside of that, that organization. I, and the way I describe it is a wheel, right? So every, every spoke of the wheel is how the wheel turns. One broken spoke is where that wheel starts to become uneven. And then the longer you go with that uneven wheel, now we just like really damage the car or the bike or whatever it might be. And every single position is equally important in the wheel turning because a therapist for us, physical therapist can't, we're not the ones answering the phone. We're not the one checking the patient in, but someone's in pain and you've got someone at the front that's like, hello, how are you? <laughs> Pay your money. They're like, ah. Like, you know, they, they might be in eight out of 10 pain, like coming in scared. They don't, you know, what, what are these people going to tell me? And now this person's like, pay money, sit down, get on my face. <laughs> like, okay, no, not, not okay. And the same thing on the other side, right? If I've, if I've got a therapist that's just like, sit down, let's go. Come on. Why are you in pain? Yeah. Like, Okay. No, it's the human is, is the center of why we exist. This is patient care. So we have to have that common existence of, we are here to make sure that people feel better. So you're helping them regain their lives. Our, our purposes is, is similar, right. And that it's human centered, but like, it's all about the human experience and making sure that that person that walks in the door gets treated by every single person that they interact with in a positive way. And how it's, I, I've had that one cog multiple times where it's like, you just have to say, this isn't a good fit for you. Like you're not, you, you don't align with our vision and, and that's okay. It's okay that you don't align. Nobody's going to scream and yell at you, but you're not part of the vision. And so we're going to have to part ways. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and, and because, you know, because of the world that you guys are in and the world that I'm in, um, you know, it almost, um, I, I hate to say that it seems obvious for us, right? But that we're focused on people in this way, right? We have to be understanding and caring. But, but you know, for folks that are, that might be listening that aren't necessarily in a, um, you know, a, a physical therapy or mental health care or whatever, you know, it, it extends beyond that. You know, you look at a company like Zappos with Tony Sai, and you look at their customer service department mm -hmm. and they would compete on who could take the longest customer service call, okay. which is the exact opposite of every call center yeah. in the world. And it's right. because they said, you know, their mission and their vision was to like help this client have a more seamless customer service experience experience and to like have a better day. I'm sure they okay. have a specific vision and mission. I don't know what it was, but I know that if you call that 800 number, you're going to have a wonderful experience no matter how upset <laughs> you are. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and it changes everything, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, how expensive is that to get and maintain those people? Well, sometimes it's expensive, but it's more expensive not to. And I, I feel like from personal experience, um, that when there is that negative employee, or even if it's in leadership, it's, they're not the ones that normally leave. It's all of the good employees <laughs> around them no. that are like, I can't do this anymore. Like, and like you lose all your good employees by keeping that one mm -hmm. that just doesn't align with what you're going for. All right. Yeah. So, so Nick, that kind of leads into the next question. What's mm -hmm. been your biggest struggle as a leader? And it could be, it could be 10 yeah. years ago. It could be yesterday. 
it doesn't matter. No, yeah, I mean, I think that the, um, you know, the feedback that I, well, two things. One is, you know, there was a period in my life where, and probably this is the most glaring, where I, I wasn't taking care of myself, right? And so I was kind of giving, 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 not just to employees, but to like other, you know, various aspects of my life. And I wasn't like refilling my cup, so to speak, to stay on brand. <laughs> Um, but I wasn't refilling my personal cop and I wasn't doing my own self care. And so, um, you know, a lot of times I think as a leader, you can get bogged down in this like busy, 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 you know, stay, you know, and that used to be a badge of honor, right. To, to work the longest hours and to, to, you know, be on the grind and like, how are you doing? Oh, I'm busy. Right. That was like a badge of honor. Um, you know, I try not to do that anymore. Um, because I, I think that, you know, if I'm not on top of my game, then I can't show up well for my team. And I think that's been something that I have, you know, struggled with, not just when I was, you know, struggling with active addiction and mental health issues, but also just throughout my career where it's like, okay, I'm not doing the things I need to do for myself in order to stay energetic and motivated and keep other people motivated. So I think that's one, um, you know, I think the other thing that I struggle with too, and, and I think a lot of people that are like vision driven leaders struggle with is like balancing that bottom line. Um, and, and, you know, like theoretically I know how to do it. Um, I know how to manage costs. I know how to like drive operations, but, but it's not my core strength. Um, and so, you know, being able to kind of like keep folks on task is hard for me. Um, mm -hmm. And how I've worked around that my whole career is just found people that are self-motivated and do it themselves. So there you go. <laughs> or or I hire a COO that is is, you know, coming out of a lifetime of manufacturing that's like, you know, knows his stuff. And so it can be the counterbalance. And so I think, you know, sometimes as a leader, we we just have to acknowledge, you know, I'm 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 41 now. And so like I can get better at these things, but there's some things I won't get better at. And so I just need to find someone else on the team that's really good at that. Um, or I need to hire for people that don't need that, you know? So, so it's a little bit of balance. Yes. I want to get better, but also I realize that, you know, uh, old dog, new tricks and all. Well, sometimes uh, surrounding, sometimes surrounding yourself with people that are better at certain aspects than you allows you to then get stronger at the things that you're already good at. Um, Cause I don't, Feel like we necessarily need to be experts at everything but if you're smart enough to surround yourself with those people and like kind of pick them into your lives to help you like it makes you even almost stronger yeah well that's that's been my approach so i'll take it <laughs> <laughs> well i can definitely see where there's everybody's going to have a, a sense of where they want to go and mm -hmm. the more that you fight that i feel like you just aren't happy Right. I mean, like you're a visionary. So that's like, you've got to get that energy out. You've got to get those ideas out. That's where you're going to grow and be happy. And you're just always pushing things forward. So by be, being more on that, on the other side of micromanaging, things like that, it's just going to like steal all of your energy. So, so what's the point, right? Like, yeah, like yeah. There, it doesn't, there, it doesn't make any sense to like, to not recognize what the strengths are. And then I also love how you're talking about how you have to fill your own glass. This is something that, I mean, Bobby and I talk about on a, on a regular basis. It's, you know, we're both, you know, super busy and have a lot going on. You know, I've got two small kids plus trying to, you know, work and, and, you know, do everything else. And I definitely noticed that like, if I start to sacrifice the things that I need. And so I, I, I sit down and I write out, what are my needs in order to find my balance? And I run, that's what I do. And so even if like this morning we had swim lessons. And so I ran <laughs> before the swim lessons, got the, got the kiddo in the pool and then, you know, ran back. I'm still sweaty. Um, have not showered. Um, <laughs> nobody can smell me. We're fine. <laughs> But that's, I know if I get that run in, I just started that day off right. And I'm, and I'm feeling good. If I don't get that run in and I, I'm like, okay, no, I'll just drive. And then I'll, you know, and then I'll just do this and then I'll just do that. Then I start kind of going downhill. And it's like that little bit, like 30 minutes makes all the difference in the world for me, which then keeps my energy high and keeps me much more present. And so it's just that it doesn't have to be three hours of self-care 
it can be for depending on the individual, it can be 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, some quiet time in the evenings, maybe some guided meditation, breathing, little yoga, and it, you intersperse throughout the week. And I, at least it keeps my, my crazy mind as (laughs) sane as possible. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Same. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, as far as moving forward, right. So you kind of mentioned it, like things that you want to grow towards, right. Because we always want to set goals for ourselves and how we're thinking about our, you know, the way I kind of think about it is like in six months, where do we want to be in five years? Where do we want to be in 10 years? Where do we want to be? So like, how do you set up those growth patterns for yourself? Like, where do you want to go? Yeah. So, so first just talk, I just want to mention a little bit about the, the, the kind of the patterns themselves. Um, so I almost look at it. Somebody described it one time to me as like, um, uh, like a dolphin, right? So you, you, you're, you're going up and down and up is strategic and down is tactical, right? So it's like the strategic tech throughout the course of the business, yeah. you're going back and forth. And this especially applies to like people that are in kind of junior executive positions where, where they're starting to do more strategic stuff, but they're still actively involved in the tactical, but it also applies to any small business as well, um, where, you know, you set a strategic goal and then you shift your mind to executing that goal for, for a while. And then once you've started to get good at that, then you shift back to another strategic goal. And so, you know, for us, um, you know, our first goal, our first kind of like, you know, I don't even know if it's strategic, but our first goal was to get the center up and running. Um, and to, and then it was to grow census. And, you know, we've been executing on those two things to try to provide the highest quality care. And so, you know, I have an idea where I want to go, but my day to day right now is still focused on making sure that we're delivering quality care and growing our census here and our team and building everything out and the processes that we need. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that once we get to that point, and I, I already know when it is, it's like I already scheduled when I'm going to think about what I want to think about. <laughs> um, so, so in fall in quarter three, that's when I start to shift back toward our strategic focus, um, you know, and, and I, I like to come at it from a blank slate of, OK, well, the vision stays, help clients regain their lives. Now, how do we best execute against that? Given what I've seen us be able to do over the last year, what does that mean? And so, you know, it could mean doing more of the same in a different place, right? A new location. Mm-hmm. Um, it could mean expanding on what we do and offer in the same place. Um, And there's a book called uh, Profit from the Core by a guy named Michael Zook. Uh, Chris Zook, Chris Zook, Michael Zook. Zook is his last name. Um, I haven't read it in 10 years. Um, I think Chris Zook now I say it. Um, Anyway, he, um, you know, what he said is find the thing that you do the best in the world and do more of that thing. And that's how you grow a business. Um, And so, you know, the challenging part there is like defining what it is that you do better than anyone else, right? Well, is it, is it, you know, for us, is it provide substance use disorder treatment and treat co-occurring disorders within a PHP IOP level of care in Jacksonville? It could be that specific, right? Mm -hmm. Or it could be, we help people regain their lives from challenges with mental health and, and substance use disorder. Well, in that case, maybe we can do more stuff to help in service of that goal of that, of that strength that we have. And so, so it's, it's a process of sitting down and saying like, how do we define ourselves and what are we able to do better than anyone else in the world? And let's do more of that thing. Um, and so, um, and, and it's also not getting too, too far out in front of your skis and saying, Oh, well, I'm a, I'm the best mental health provider. Well, like that's a little vague, right? Like I probably shouldn't be starting a, you know, a a residential mental health primary center in Miami, right? Like that's too far, right? But I could potentially start uh, the same thing as we do here in Miami, or I could start primary mental health here, you know, just so so it's, it's kind of this, you have this menu of things that are one step removed from where you want to be. And then you set that and then you go back down to the tactical and then you go back up again. And so it's this iterative process of, of, of setting these strategic goals and then executing. And then once you've executed, it frees you up. So I, if I were to, if I were to guess, I'd say we'd probably do more of what we're doing in different places. Gotcha. Yeah. 
what is one of your like favorite ways for you to develop like your leadership skills or your, your ability to be a better leader? Yeah, it's a good question. I probably need to do more of that. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I think throughout the years, um, I, I certainly enjoyed uh, education and reading. Um, and, and I still do. Um, I, I think, you know, along with everyone else, I've, I've, um, my attention span has gotten shorter and I read a lot more articles and watch a lot more clips now than mm -hmm. I used to. <laughs> I don't know that that's a bad thing or a good thing. I don't know. I know I used to read a lot more books. Um, you know, but I think that, you know, my, you know, as I think about what, what helped me the most throughout my career, you know, my undergraduate experience was focused on leadership because it was at West Point and then, you know, business school, obviously we talked a lot about entrepreneurial leadership at Stanford and then, you know, the books that I've read and the leaders that I've had, you know, I think one of the things that um, if I were to say, I wish I had taken advantage of this more um, in terms of my development would probably be mentors and, and, and asking um, mm -hmm. for help. Um, you know, I, I was blessed at the Pet Law Center um, with having just a dynamic board of directors um, that were all, you know, Silicon Valley heroes. And, and um, yeah, I just didn't leverage them. I mean, they would have answered my calls. Why wasn't I calling them? It was like free coaching. And so, um, so I feel like I wish I had, um, you know, leveraged other people and mentors more in my development than, than what I did. So, so, so I think education and reading and consuming content of other leaders has probably been the thing that I've done the most of and has been the most successful. And then the one that I wish I had done more of was, was leverage you know, individual mentors and like book time on their calendars without an yeah. agenda. Gotcha. Um, I think that's so important is the, uh, just the people around us that have strengths that are different than ours, experiences that are different than ours. Uh, the human aspect of learning is something that is, I think really forgotten sometimes. It's like, I got this. It's like, I'm going to like, I'm going to I'm going to get educated in X, Y, or Z. And, um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's not that it's not that simple. Sometimes there's so much with mentorship that is, I, I, I love that it's, I've used it so much in my, my career growth. I've got individuals that have come into my life that like all of a sudden you just ask their perspective on something. And you're like, how do you, how do you know that? Like, they're like, well, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I can tell you that what you're going to read is this, but think about this, this, and this, if you come about it from this angle, most likely you're going to have a little bit of a different view and it might be more clear. And you're like, oh my gosh, you're right. And they're like, because I tried <laughs> that way a lot of times. And then I, I took a step back and looked at it over this way and it worked for me. And so like, it's so funny. Cause like almost every time I, I, talk with somebody that is like that, like just more experience in some way. It's awesome. Just the tidbits and that, that little bit of knowledge that's, it's like the knowledge that you have, but with life experience. <laughs> yeah, so. no, you're right. You know, and like, I think great. I, as you're talking, it made me think of, of another thing, um, you know, that has been helpful for me, I guess, more so in recent years is, um, you know, I learned so much in residential treatment and rehab about, you know, these core skills of, of communication and relationships and values and like all of these things that we teach within a therapy program and things that we teach here are, are amazing interpersonal skills. And so, um, you know, I have to throw like therapy on there as a, as a, as a great way to, to be able to you know, maybe not better yourself in a specific business context, but, but create a better version of you that can mm -hmm. then, you know, communicate more effectively and relate to the world around you and the people around you, um, you know, in a more effective way. I mean, I, I think that, you know, the, the curriculum that, that is taught at, at a, you know, treatment facility or, you know, here at Sofros is probably more valuable in leadership training than, than like what you would get, certainly what you would get in school. That's Absolutely. Jess and I have talked a lot. And that was one thing she kind of brought up was like, first thing to do is look at yourself and like, how do you react to people and how do you handle situations and being better aware of how you respond to things um, to then mm -hmm. just be more aware of that 
around others. And just understanding that you, you're a human and they're a human and we're different humans. And I might have a, one personality type. You might have a different personality type. I might have one way of one way of leading that is my tendency you might have a different way of leading that's your tendency so the more that we just step back understand ourselves a little bit more understand the people that we're working with a little bit better all of a sudden that communication becomes so much easier <laughs> right absolutely <laughs> right? it's like yeah. i'm actually listening to what they're saying but by listening i'm not just listening to the words i'm listening to their signals that they're giving me that like those body signals are they making eye contact are they shut off or you know like all of the different cues that you can just say hold on like real quick let's take a step back like first how's your morning how are you <laughs> right right They're like what do you mean i'm like i just you know i'm just checking you know good morning oh well i mean i had this flat tire on the way and this and that i'm like i'm just you know like okay yeah no big deal um let's 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 maybe let's have a cup of coffee real quick right right yeah that'd be great okay all right now now let's get into the day <laughs> but like get it out get it out yeah unload like, don't hold mm -hmm. that. Don't hold it in because now you're holding that in and, and who knows how long it's going to take you to get that out. You might hold that all day. You know, it was a bummer to get a flat tire on the way to work. Yeah, that that's that's not cool. <laughs> now you're all sweaty. Your work shirt's dirty. It's, you know, like, <laughs> you're on this right. spare. Now, when am I going to get this repaired? Like, I don't know if I have time at my lunch break to do this. I mean, your, your thoughts are just going crazy. Now, are you actually like present in the moment of like when we're trying to deal with other humans? No? Okay, cool. So like, so I just recognize it. Hey, I'm noticing something different in you today. Can we just take a step back first before we talk about the logistics of like everything that needs to happen coming forward? Cool. Let's make a plan for that spare tire. Okay. So, so we'll go, like you said, like, let's take like what you do in the quarter, right? So third quarter, you're going to step back, look at everything again. Let's step back right now in the moment. Let's step back. Let's make a plan to make sure you're okay. Okay, mm -hmm. now let's move forward. But like, if you're not paying attention to these little cues that the people are giving you, you're going to blow right past it. And then that one experience is going to turn to another, to another, to another, that could culminate mm -hmm. into an entire day of who knows what, right? And all those interactions that that human's going to have with other humans might not be great, <laughs> you know? Where if we could just yeah. cut it off at the pass and say, hey, like, what can we do to like, have you feel a little bit better? First, I need to know what's going on. Um, and you don't have to tell me, you don't have to disclose anything, but like, what if I just ask how you're doing? <laughs> what if I do one thing, one thing and just ask that question. And, and if they know they have an audience, that's not going to attack them for saying the truth, you know, like truthfully, I don't feel good today, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. yeah. So you create that safe environment, that safe space and, uh, hopefully productive. And then, you know, moving forward, then you create that positive culture and then you can step back and you can look at how you're going to grow because you're developing that team around you that trust you so because you had enough introspection to to know yourself well enough to then be able to then start to learn other people so yeah, yeah. just something that i've noticed in leadership <laughs> working no, on working with agree. many different companies and it's uh the ones where i have been the happiest are the ones where the individuals leading were just a happy they were happy people and that doesn't mean their life is perfect it does not mean that they might have all sorts of other stuff going on but they're putting so much work into themselves that they are trying as best as they can just as best as we all can to look at each day as as half full that doesn't mean it's full that doesn't mean the glass is full right. <laughs> it's half full okay yeah. like i like okay i didn't sleep eight hours last night okay i didn't i didn't do the normal length of my run okay i didn't you know like i i didn't have that perfect breakfast no but like i slept seven okay that was close closer than the eight i do feel a bit, little bit better at eight but seven will take um i did run not as much as normal okay i didn't have time to shower that's okay is what it is right but like if i can just reframe that and not beat myself up then i'm just going to be a happier person around other people doesn't mean i'm crushing it in life it just right. you know, it's how I'm in. And so I think as much as we can for our listeners, we're constantly trying to say it's okay to not be a hundred percent. Like that's okay. And the more you accept that with yourself, then hopefully the people around you, you'll be able to accept that out of them. 
And the more that we're accepting of them, ideally, then we can all grow together. Unless they're the bad hog. If they're the bad hog, <laughs> can't do it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. So Nick, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate talking with people that know more than we do about different topics. And it's really, really great what you've been able to see the vision for Softrose and then get it up and running and, and creating a space in the greater Jacksonville area that's a, a safe space for people to go and get better and heal. And so I think I think it's great. It's it's something that is so needed in so many communities, not just here. It's this is it's such a, a large, um, uh, a largely underserved population, I will say for sure. So um, as far as our listeners go, please follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we are also on YouTube. So if you want to just kind of keep with, keep up with what we're kind of posting on a regular basis, you know, we're trying to keep everybody engaged so that you are kind of following along the narrative. So the month of August, we're going to continue to talk about leadership in, in other ways. So not necessarily <clears throat> like in the workplace, like we were talking today, but then we're going to talk about leadership into personal lives, into families, and all sorts of other ways that we can kind of get this concept digested and then implement it. So we look forward to uh, the next conversation, which is with a mental health counselor, and her name is Jada, and we'll be talking about moving from um, away from punishment and then into effectiveness. So stay tuned. <laughs>